All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in this video, we're gonna go over the slider connection. Uh, it's it's uh, useful, and I guess uh, one of the applications is would be I guess if you're trying to model, let's say, a syringe or something, or uh, I, I don't know, um, a squirt gun or something. Um, it, it's a slider connection that allows you to control the linear movement it's, it's only linear uh, but let's 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 get into it I'm gonna bring in the same link again and I don't know where it is lost okay so there it is uh, so we're gonna go over and we're gonna select a slider connection and we're gonna go to placement and it's again asking us for axes alignment I'm gonna select the axes I'm gonna say turn them on and what what, what essentially it's asking me is where which path am I going to use to have this uh, uh, slider connection made, so the axes you select is essentially the, the the direction the thing is going to slide in. That's the main purpose of this uh, this axis, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an axis. Uh, it can just be a line, uh, I think. Can it? No, it can't be. Uh, so I guess it can't be a line. Axes of rotation. Why can't it be a line? I'm pretty sure it can be a line. Yep, it can be a line. It, yeah, I'm pretty, I was. I, I don't know why I felt like it was. Okay, so any linear thing, any any straight line that you might have, uh, any edge you could use as uh, constraint for the axes of rotate alignment. Uh, axes. I think I'm saying that weird. Axes. Axes alignment. Um, yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a round edge, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to use that because you know it, that that it makes sense for what I'm about to do. But uh, just keep that in mind that you know you don't have to have round shapes to have slider connections. You can do those in squares. Um, okay, so let's let's uh, let's do it. Uh, placement axes of alignment. I'm going to select the axes again. But this time I'm going to select the actual axes. Um, now it's asking me for rotation. Now, since this is a slider connection, we can't uh, have rotation. It's only allowed to slide uh, linearly back and forth. So, so right now we have, we got two degrees of freedom. We we can't have that in a slider connection. It's allowed to rotate and it's allowed to go back and forth. We can only have it go back and forth, and that's our end goal here, which is what we'll do. Uh, so, so how would you go about this? Um, it, it, this is something that could be tricky sometimes because you know sometimes we turn off these datum features and we forget that we can use these datum features to uh, set our constraints um, but some of these constraints are very easy to make if you activate some only particular datum features like planes so all I'm gonna say is essentially I'm gonna say this plane right here this this horizontal plane or the vertical plane for this part is, is going to be coincident and I don't really have to say it it's automatically selected because that's that's the uh, default and you can't really change that either by the way um, and, and that's the default right there it's gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna remain coincident with this plane right here what that means is you know I'm not allowed to rotate anymore I'm saying that this plane almost becomes rigid uh, relative to this plane um, and and you'll notice that the rotational degree of freedom went away. Before this was a blue arrow in the rotational uh, 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 degree of freedom indicator right here. If you watch again right here, it's allowed to rotate. But the moment I select that plane, it's it's immediately going back to uh, a static, almost thing that doesn't move in any rotational. Um, I have I have trapped myself in my words. I don't I don't know how to English right now. Okay, so but you get the point. It's only allowed to move in these these two directions. But if we just leave it like this, it's gonna go infinity to infinity. You know, there's nothing really. There's no physics engine running in the background here that's gonna say, oh, okay, it's gonna s stay in it within reasonable limits. Um, so we have to kind of give it some intelligence. And we can do that, and we can say it's only allowed to move within a particular distance. So we go to the translation axes. 
uh, and don't be fooled by these uh, names you don't have to select axes or edges you can select a surface which is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select the surface from the part and then I'm gonna select the surface from the main assembly and right there it gives me a distance figure and I'm gonna say it's zero the moment I say zero the two surfaces that I selected are immediately uh, coincident with each other um, and I'm gonna keep using the term by the way coincident coincident means you know they're in the same plane uh, but you should know that by now uh, so this is our zero and I'm gonna say our minimum limit is zero so let's see what happens when we just set the minimum limit. just a minute we're not gonna mess with this maximum yet so I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna click control I'm gonna press control alt and then I'm gonna click and drag uh, so I'm only allowed to go in, in in the forward direction I guess so when I click and drag and I try to go backwards like this at, at that point where we set zero it's not allowing me to go back from that it's only allowing me to go forward so we know our minimum is right here and then I'm gonna go to the definition again at a definition and translation axes now we're gonna set a maximum limit and again uh, hold on a second so so we want it to be realistic right so we, we want the minimum limit to be the distance between this surface right here and the surface uh, in between so I guess a better way to show that would be let me just go to the top here or something so so this 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 little gap right here from, that you see here this tiny gap that's gonna be my maximum distance because I want it to be able to slide just here and then stop right now it's going further but I want it to stop automatically like it does at a minimum limit so I'm gonna go to edit definition actually no I don't really know what that distance is so let's use the measure tool I think this is the first time I'm using the measure tool in assembly uh, okay so I'm gonna select the surface uh, I'm gonna select what do I have selected distance yeah so I'm gonna measure the distance between this surface and then I'm gonna hold down control then I'm gonna select the surface I wanna I wanna get the distance to let's see right here okay so, so it's 0.25 and it's showing me the surfaces selected with this little line right here with the uh, black spheres or circles whatever you want to call it um, and, and that's the distance and that's that's how the measure tool sometimes comes in handy you know it, it helps you understand the physical constraints that you need to place um, and, and just understand how physically the part might be might need to be constrained uh, so let's go back to that edit definition and for the maximum now we're gonna say 0.25 because that's that was the distance of our gap and that's we're gonna say that's the maximum distance it's allowed to move and we're gonna hit OK so let's see what happens our minimum was zero this is our zero and maximum is 0.25 and look at that I'm clicking and I'm dragging again I'm doing this by pressing down control alt and then I'm clicking and dragging uh, and, and it's not going further than that that 0.25 mark and it's only going between these two marks and, and I guess this is this is to some degree synonymous to you know modeling a syringe or something uh, where you would have a, a fairly defined distance uh, through which a certain uh, push pin would be able to uh, move and it's not allowed to rotate either if I, if I don't I haven't really worked with syringes as much but uh, I guess you get the point it's allowed to slide back and forth so that's a slider connection um, and I'm gonna quickly go over some of the other connections that I don't really need to show um, rigid connection is is essentially you know it's it's a place where the part remains static essentially uh, so it's not gonna have any degree of freedom and you're gonna have to select uh, surfaces accordingly so right now I already have these two surfaces selected these axes in constrained okay so when, when I make a, a coincident uh, I'm sorry a restraint constraint you know it's not really allowed to move anywhere I'm trying to move it right now drag component nothing's happening nothing's happening um, and, and by the way I'm not gonna as, as we get into this course I'm gonna get, I'm not gonna explain what every single one of these means uh, you're gonna need to mess around with it because I think that's the best way to learn kind of mess around with it yourself because I think you're familiar with the interface by now and, and uh, I think it's not that difficult I don't think it is at least um, but 
that's it. it it's a very very straightforward uh, constraint that I've never really used uh, I don't, I, unless you're making static assemblies just to show how your assembly looks like and how a part looks like how a concept looks like I don't really see the point of rigid um, I mean even if you could I mean you could always use fix command or something you don't really need rigid uh, let me show you fix this fix exists right here so so when you have a part right here and you moved it to a place where you think it looks okay you can just click fix and it's gonna take away all the degrees of freedom and when I can hit control alt and you know try to drag it around it's gonna have the same behavior it's not gonna move anywhere so I don't really understand why rigid exists but you know it does I guess um, that's that so that was a slider connection and a rigid connection and while I'm at it I'll just go over the um, cylinder connection as well uh, let me get rid of this and we did slider we're gonna do cylinder let's do cylinder so again it's asking me for axes of alignment and again it can be any linear thing it doesn't have to be this particular um, axes uh, okay that's it okay so what I did is I, I selected the axis of alignment then I selected two surfaces it's essentially like a slider connection where I'm gonna say the minimum is zero and then my maximum is <coughs> sorry 0.25 and, and that's it so in, in a cylinder connection the main difference is it's allowed to rotate it's it's allowed to slide back and forth in, in, in the limits that we've set for ourselves so it's only gonna slide back and forth in the in the 0.25 inches um, but it's not gonna rotate I mean it's gonna rotate <laughs> sorry uh, so just remember slider no rotation we can only slide back and forth cylinder there is rotation and we can slide back and forth um, rigid is just um, you know static placement and that's I think that's it for this video we'll, we'll go over uh, slot connections and we might even go over the ball connection um, in the next video and after that we're gonna get into some of the kinematic analysis and uh, and after that I guess uh, we'll get into dynamic but I'm gonna try to make that into just one large video instead of uh, these uh, small bite-sized videos because those are better just you know done as one case study so prepare for that I guess uh, prepare for a lengthy video but this this is it for now